Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something that's really sensitive. Actually, I feel like I've started the last few vi videos talking about something really sensitive, but today it is ultra sensitive because um, it would be really easy to take this personally. And I am sharing this information with you as your friend. I want to make you wiser, smarter, more savvy as a woman. Um, so before we get started, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to just pray that God will, you know, shepherd your heart so that you do not take this personally because it is truly meant to make you a more savvy woman and a more savvy wife. So this thing is, is really important to a man and it's not necessarily as important to us as it is to, a, um, t to men. Um, and frankly, a lot of women can have a blind spot in this area. It is so easy to become dangerously complacent after we get married because um, you know when we're dating we do our best to look the very best that we can right and then we get married um, maybe have a few kids and um, and get older certainly as we get older and our bodies begin to change I mean th this is just this is just the way it is um, but something that is extremely important to your husband that he wants you to know about but is scared to talk to you about is your appearance. Your appearance to your husband is extremely important. Listen to what Rick Johnson says. I, I love this. And honestly, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to read from a script some um, for this video because um, I've carefully worded some of my phrases. I almost, I really don't want to go off script um, because I want you to hear this through the lens of me helping you to be your best. But um, Rick Johnson says, Dr. Rick Johnson in The Man Whisper, he says that if you ask 100 men if their wife's appearance is important to them, 95 will say yes. The other five will not have understood the question. And so, and then if you read um, Shanti Feldman's book, um, what is it called? It's coming. Um, for women only. She gives the same data that Rick Johnson gives in his book. And so girls, it is hugely important to a man. And if your husband has tried to talk to you about it before and, um, and you know, you've made it very clear you didn't want to talk about it anymore um, and he's not talking about it. But let me tell you something. Dr. Rick Johnson says just because he's not talking about it doesn't mean that he's not thinking about it. He's just not verbalizing it. And so, friend, I want to encourage you um, to make an effort. Make an effort with your appearance. Um, men are very visually stimulated. Most men care how their wives look, whether they say it or not. And so a wise woman would give consideration to this. Um, often men are around well-dressed women all day at work. You know, when, when you come home at the end of the day, whether you're, what, what do you look like? Um, is your husband coming home to a woman that is, um, that looks nice and well kept? What did you look like when you got married? What was your weight like when you got married? Um, listen, I, I'm not saying, and certainly in these two books where it really copycats a lot of the same information, you don't need to be a size two. And listen, if you're a size two and you're thinking already, I need to lose some weight, then friend, you are delusional. You do not need to lose any weight. Please do not hear that. I'm not trying to encourage any kind of eating disorders um, or anything of the making. What is most important to men, and I want you to hear this. I want you to look in my eyes. This is what is most important to men. Um, it makes a world of difference to a man when his wife makes an effort to look nice for him. To a man, this shows love, care, and respect. Because the reality is, is that men see their wives as a reflection of themselves. And so what you don't need to do, you do not need to starve yourself. You do not need to look like a Barbie doll. Um, you just need to make an effort. Just, just make an effort. I want to share with you um, just, I, I'm 52. At the recording of this video, I'm 52. And but when I was in my 40s, I, I'm in much better shape now than I ever was in my 40s. And I really wish that I would have taken better care of myself and would have made the life habits that I've made now, I wish I would have made those then. If you look at pictures of me or if you look at videos of me, I don't know, before 2015, I suppose, 
Um, you know, I was on, I was, I, for me, for me, I was on a hev my heavier side. And um, I really didn't care if you really want to know the truth. Um, but I don't know, I guess something happened as I approached 50 and I wanted to feel good. And I made some lifestyle changes and honestly, I feel better than I have felt even when I was in my 30s and 40s because I'm, I've am i made lifestyle changes that I'm taking better care of myself and I feel better. And I am not, a, I'm, not I'm not even, the um I, i'd hesitate to give my size but well i'll just go ahead and tell you like i'm typically a size 10 or a size 8. when i got married i was a size 8 or a size 6. um it just depended on the day can i get an amen on that anyway um you know i was pushing a size 14 and um for my height my weight and so i am at a height and my with my height and weight and just the natural changes that occur in a woman's body um, I am not trying to beat myself up. I just want to be the best version of myself and it works in my household. And so I just want to encourage you to be a savvy woman. And so real quick, just some things that you can do um, is number one is exercise. Make exercise a priority. And um, I used to be able to run and um, I can't run anymore. It triggers migraines. It's the craziest thing. <clears throat> But I can walk, and I definitely power walk. Um, I, I'm now doing Pilates. I feel like Pilates has made me so strong. Um, I'm a lot stronger. My core is a lot stronger than it ever used to be. I almost feel like after I had my kids, I just kind of let it go because I don't know. It just wasn't as important, and I regret that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have made exercise a lifestyle habit, and now it has become a lifestyle habit. And it's not every day. It's and there are some weeks that I'm better than others, but I don't beat myself up. So I just would encourage you to develop an exercise routine that works for you. Okay, number two. Um, actually, I meant for this to be number one. Number one is pray. God wants us to take care of our bodies. He wants us to take care of our temples. If we have, um, have accepted Jesus as Savior, then the Holy Spirit of God lives in our bodies. And we are the temple of God. And He wants us to take care of our temples. He wants us to look after it. Number three is your diet. Um, and again, I shared this a little while ago. Um, this doesn't mean that you have to starve yourself. It just means on a regular basis, making lifestyle choices, healthy choices that you can maintain on a regular basis. Now, listen, this does not mean that I do not eat, um, I mean like bread is some of my favorite things. And not like a week ago, I was on vacation and I went into this coffee shop and had these donuts that were baked in house and y'all, they look so good. And so of course I had to get one. And let me tell you, I did split it with my daughter. Um, but that donut was the best thing in the world and I did not feel one bit of guilt from eating it because I'm not doing that on a regular basis. Moderation is key. And so just begin to make these little changes. And listen, there doesn't need to be some grandiose announcement. Just begin to, to, to work this into your lifestyle. You don't have to tell your husband you're doing it. Just begin to do it. And I'm telling you, you are going to make that man so happy. He is going to be so excited that you are making these lifestyle changes. Okay, just a few more. Um, number four, fix your hair in a flattering way. Um, yeah, really don't need to say anything else after that, but you know what I'm talking about. What looks good for you. Don't let it look straggly all the time, but take care of your hair and um, wear it in a flattering way. Number five, wear clothes that are flattering to you. Listen, since I've got on YouTube to, or, or gotten on YouTube to research how to do these videos, I started following some clothes girls that I love and just um, learning the kind of clothes that flatter me best. And my husband w came in, I, I, I have these videos on while I'm getting dressed in the morning, and my husband came in while I was watching it, and he was like, what are you watching? I was like, I'm watching fashion videos. And he <laughs> kind of laughed, and he was like, I'm impressed. And you know what, it's helping me, because I really don't have that eye 
Um, but there's some really good folks on, on YouTube. Anna Reed's one of my favorites um, that I watch. Also, well, anyway, she's one of my favorites. Um, so shout out to Anna Reed. Anyway, next is not just wear clothes. Um, oh, but let me say this about clothes. Um, because I was finding myself doing this because I want to hide my midsection, my waist, because I feel like that's where I gain my weight, there and in my thighs. And so um, I was wearing baggy clothes as a result. And so I just want to encourage you, um, you do not need to wear baggy clothes all the time. And it does not matter if you're a plus size girl or um, a medium size girl or a small size girl. Um, wear clothes that flatter you, but don't be wearing baggy all the time. And Again, refer to some of these fashionistas that are much smarter than I am, but I've learned some things and I, I don't wear those baggy clothes anymore. Okay, um, next and, and last is wear a little bit of makeup. Even if you don't wear that much makeup, a little bit of makeup can go a long way, especially as we get older. And you can wear minimal makeup and still look really good and really nice because you have to be savvy. Girls, we gotta be savvy in this world. We cannot be, um, you know, there's a verse in the Bible and it says, um, be as wise as a serpent, but innocent as a dove. And was, as we are wise in this area, we are being wise as serpents because there are plenty of women in this world that um, would love to catch your husband's eye. And so friend, we have to be the one that catches their eye and keeps their eye. And so sadly, this is the world that we live in um, and so, yeah, we have to be smart. Okay. Hope this helps. Have a great day.